We're on the portion control diet. If you've never been on that diet, what you do after you finish that small meal is for the next 30 minutes, you say out loud how that was the perfect amount of food. <laughs> and you just go, that was the perfect amount of food. Any more than that, I wouldn't be able to do jumping jacks right now. And but that's what you say on the outside. On the inside, you're like, that was just enough to piss me off. <laughs> Trekking heavier traveling life. There's one thing that's right wherever I go. That's where I am. Hey, everybody. Oh, that was a little extra, but that's how we're starting. Uh, welcome to this week in Zoltan episode, I don't know. Uh, but I'll tell you, it comes out a week after I record it. I'll give you that little... I just realized that I should probably tell you guys that, because I'm going to tell you what I did the last weekend, and you guys are going to be like, that was two weeks ago. Or like, I'm going to talk about the next 9-11, and then you're going to be like, he is so late on the next 9-11. It's because there's a delay. Because I don't want to, I'm trying to be consistent with releasing these, so I try to give myself a weak buffer. So, you don't need to know all this inside baseball. Point is, I had a great weekend in Denver, Colorado. Uh, what th Five sold out shows. 800 people came up to l watch my face and laugh at it, and thank you. Uh, I got, I, it feels like I'm bragging, and I am. Uh, I am because there's a lot of clubs that have said no to me. So I like, I like booking venues and then selling a bunch of tickets and then talking about them just to let them know they're missing out. You know, it's kind of like when you get rejected by, uh, maybe like the, the hot girl in high school. So you get, you get another attractive one. By the way, none of these things happened to me in high school. Uh, <laughs> I definitely got rejected, but I didn't like point counterpoint get the next hottest girl and then show her off to the first hottest girl i just stood uh, against the wall and didn't do anything but in a comparison imagine you're danny zuko in greece and you go and hit on somebody and they're like no thank you you grease ball and then you're like whatever baby and you pop that collar and you t-bird it out of there and then you go get the next girl and then you parade her around that girl to let her know that what she's missing that's what i'm doing with these comedy clubs so Five sold out shows, Denver. Thank you, Bug Theater. Uh, Alex, the guy who runs it, amazing. Um, I also got a standing ovation, which uh, is really started by one guy, I realized. It, every standing ovation, I think, is started by one person, and then everyone else feels the need to join in because they're like, ah, oh, that guy's standing. Yeah, you know, I think we have to stand now, because like the first guy, sta the first guy bolts out of his seat, like, yeah, and then everyone else is like, was it? Oh, I get, yeah, w woo, and then everybody stands, which was amazing. Makes me feel uncomfortable. My wife got mad at me because I never stand there and soak it in. I just run off the stage, and she's like, it's rude. You should stand there. And I'm like, who am I? Like Bill Gates, like unveiling the new Windows 95, just like, yes, yes, it was me. I did tell those jokes. I am wearing these clothes. I, so I just run off. But then I posted the photo of it because I took a quick photo of it, and I posted it on Instagram, and she goes, it would be funny if like people see that. And then now they try to start standing ovations for the next couple shows. And that's exactly what happened. The next show, standing ovation. The show after that, standing ovation. And it felt like she, what she said got into my head. And then I'm like, oh, they think they're supposed to because maybe this one person saw a story and that guy stood and then everyone else is like, we're standing? Is that what we're doing? And so I got better at soaking it in. I stood. I gave one of these. You know, I, I want to get better where you like do a point to someone in the audience. You're like, that's that's exactly pound the chest a little. You're like, you're right. I am amazing. And so it's just it's completely uncomfortable. But the shows were super fun. I'm getting ready to film uh, a special in December. So I think it's all there. And uh, big apologies to the people that came out on Thursday because you guys were confused on show times. It's an event break thing. Because uh, the early shows, Friday and Saturday, started at 7. But we had one show on Thursday, so I started at 8. But the event, if you look at the entire event, it's from 14 to 16, 7 p.m. to 11. But if you look at the individual ticket you bought, it said 8. And guess who didn't see it? The elderly people. I had, I had an old lady yell at my wife who was working the ticket booth and then yell at me saying you're wasting everybody's time and i'm like you're you would have actually been late to the show 
she showed up at like 7.20. And I'm like, you would have been 20 minutes late to the entire show. And now you're 40 minutes early. This is kind of on you. Um, and then my wife was like, why do, why do old people have such a thing about like time? And it's because they're dying. Like they got to fit it all in. Dude, they, I'm sure they had an itemized schedule that night. They're like, we're going to the show at 7, and then I'm going to get on FaceTime where I talk too close to the iPad to my niece who's living in Maine. And then I'm going to get to bed early because the next morning i got to wake up and be a part of the search team for the missing girl on a hiking trail in Denver, which is a true story. Uh, so I get it. I get why old people are grumpy. I used to work at a retirement home. Did you ever work the elderly? No, never worked with the elder. Yeah, you're not missing out. It's it's fulfilling, but you also realize what becomes important at the end of your life, and that's uh, getting to to breakfast, lunch, and dinner early. If if life boils down to one thing, what I learned from working at a retirement home for four years is that if dinner starts at six, you better be there at five fifty, shaking those double doors. Like the ultimate warrior shaking the top rope. They just start. It's intimidating, especially as a teenager working there. Uh, but I guess I guess it's true. Like once you've lived all of life, what is really important about life? Breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and the afternoon tea snack that starts at three. Show up at two fifty and shake the doors to a venue that isn't there. Um, so yeah, I get it. You're elderly, you're grumpy. I'm also kind of made a mistake, I guess. Not really though. I did it right, but you have to apologize. That's all the customer service really is. You just apologize for not doing anything wrong. Like anytime I've called customer service, once I really dug into the issue, it was me. <laughs> it, it, it was definitely me. Really? Yeah, like my, I'm. I would say seventy-five to. Nah, I'm being too nice to myself. I'd say ninety percent of the time, every time I've called to complain about customer service issues, it was me. And then I'm like, "You're right. I did book this hotel on the wrong night. I am sorry. Oh, you're right. I didn't understand the time zone difference between the United States and Asia." And I booked this hotel an entire 24 hours too early. <laughs> that ha that happened. Because they don't adjust for the... My wife and I were vacationing in Thailand last December. And I was super pumped on it. And I got a phone call from the hotel. Because like, I arranged a car to pick us up. I was trying to be fancy. And then there, the hotel calls me. And they're like, sir, the car is waiting for you at the Bangkok airport to pick you up. And I'm like... We just got on our plane in L.A. <laughs> and I was like, I have clearly messed this up. I'm like, I am, we have 32 hours of air travel in front of us. I am not going to be there soon. And they're like, oh, it's okay. We'll, re we'll, we'll reschedule it. They didn't refund me. I got to pay for that car twice. Uh, so my point is every time there's a customer service issue, it's me. And any time I've had to deal with a customer service issue of selling my own tickets through Eventbrite, it's been the customer. It really hasn't been me, but I still have to go, I'm sorry. I'm sorry you didn't read. I'm sorry you didn't look at the fine print. That's not that fine. It's actually in bold font. and It's, it's pretty big on your phone. I can tell by how zoomed in all your letters are. Like, I don't know how you missed this. But be that as it may, I'm sorry for Thursday, and uh, I'll try to do better. But I'm trying to be better than Ticketmaster. Eventbrite is so much better than Ticketmaster. There's less fees. If you buy a ticket from me on Eventbrite, the fee is like $2. And if you buy that from Ticketmaster, it's like 10 or 15 it's, it's insane. I, I complained about this the other episode, but Metallica tickets, on SeatGeek anyway, it was a $100 service fee per ticket. Oh, yeah. So if you got a $250 ticket, it's actually a $350 ticket. And that's such a kick in the nuts at the end of checkout. It's terrible, yeah. Especially when you're buying four tickets and you're texting all your friends going, they all agreed to $250 and now it comes to nut cutting time. And you're like, actually, it's $100 more per ticket. Yeah. Are you still in? Because now we're at the end. Yeah, we're so annoying. We're about to do that for next weekend. Now I was just like... What, what are, where are you I seeing? Go, they, they were doing that um, Global Citizen at Central Park. And the Chili Peppers are headlining. And yeah, I, and I like them. And it's like, yeah, with all the fees, it came out to three hundred and fifty a ticket. 
To go stand at the park. Yeah, stand at the Central Park. Ah. I was like, what if I just go to the park that day? I'm sure maybe I'll hear something. <laughs> I think so, <laughs> right? Free. Yeah, how much of the park can they shut down? I don't know. Ah, I like the Chili Peppers, too. Me too. I saw them in San Diego during their, the, the not the last album, because I guess they released two albums in the last couple of years. Yeah. The, the Black Summer one. Yeah. And uh, they did the baseball stadium in San Diego. Excellent show. Yeah. Like, the energy that Flea and... Uh, and Anthony Kiedis bring to the show oh, yeah. really levels out the mellowness that John Frusciati, <laughs> I don't know how to say his last yes. name, Frusciati, because he's, he's amazing on guitar, oh, yeah, yeah. but he's a mellow looking player. Yeah. Even though he's playing wild stuff, he's a mellow looking player. And then uh, the drummer just looks like he wants to go back to the skateboard shop he opened. <laughs> like the, the entire cut. He's playing well. He's he playing well, well, but the, you just look at him and you're like, man, this guy just wants to wants to do a kickflip in the parking lot. <laughs> and he's like, get this show over with, man. That's funny. So. But they're amazing. I love the Chili Peppers. Do you, ever, do you read Anthony Kiedis' autobiography? I'm a super fan, so. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So My girlfriend's reading it right now, actually. It's I gave it to her. Scar to tissue, right? Yeah, really yeah. Go read that. That was actually... I yanked that from the last neighborhood we lived in in San Diego. You know those stupid little libraries they yeah. sometimes put up in, and usually there's nothing in there. No. Uh, a comedian friend of mine, Andrew Slater, had a joke. He's like, "It's only like three books in there. It's like cookbooks, some diet book from the '90s, <laughs> and then like an atlas or something. Right. Like just tr it's trash." Yeah. But I looked in there and I'm like, "Oh, some guys struggle with heroin. Okay. It's it's an amazing book." Uh, also, first of all, it shows how hard addiction is, mm -hmm. and but he would just go on a cycle, not to ruin the entire novel if you haven't read it, uh, by the half of the book to the end of the book, he would just go on cycles of being strung out on heroin, then they'd record the album, go on tour, he'd be strung out on heroin, then he'd go have to go fly to like Hawaii or some debt Fiji or something, and he would detox at like a five-star hotel where he's just sweating and in hell and ordering room service then he'd feel better then he'd come back to la record and then somehow slip back into heroin and then go on tour and it would get really bad and then he would just do that cycle for like what was it 10 15 years he was doing that cycle oh yeah at least it was wild man he didn't get sober till he was like 40 yeah yeah and they and they were famous by the time he was you know I mean, they were 18? they were making music by the time he was twenty one, but right. they got really famous, you know, twenty eight, twenty nine with Blood Sugar, early yeah, nineties, at that's least right. at least yeah. a decade, with yeah. actual money to be able to you know afford it. <laughs> now you're getting the good heroin. Yeah, right. Now you're, you're the good stuff. Yeah, like I, my my addiction, thankfully, isn't uh, isn't drugs. It's food. Me too. So yeah, yeah, I'm a food guy. So like, you know, now I can afford my addiction a little bit. And you're like, no, 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 give me that steak. Give me that steak, put butter on it. Put <laughs> butter and slather it again. Um, yeah, yeah, I, I love the chili. I think you should still go. <laughs> Only because to. you're a super fan. Like, yeah, if, well, if this was a band, you're like, yeah, I like them, but they're not my favorite. I'd be like, don't go. But if you're if you're a nut fan, like well, I am of Metallica, That's go. why I justified it with, like, I saw them in, I saw them a year ago. I saw them on their last, uh, I mean, their tour for their first record they released last year in August at MetLife. Yeah. But I feel like seeing them in a park would be so much better. I couldn't justify 350 though, because I just like, I, I'd rather do so much other stuff. That's a lot but, to stand in a park and know that there's a homeless man sleeping on a bench also kind of listening to this music. Yeah, and I feel like it's not that, com I, mean, I mean, it is obviously, but like that commercialized of a concert, I thought, I thought that, I think it's for like climate change or some stuff, and I'm like, the tickets are still... You know, and you're hoping they would like lower their tickets, but you know they're doing exclusively stadiums this year. So, <laughs> I, that might not be the Chili Peppers. <laughs> I I feel like like I'm all for helping the climate, but it's a it's well, it's also Lauren Hill and Megan The Stallion, who I guess are you know who's huge. So oh, it's a big, it's a big thing. Yeah. It's a big concert. Yeah. Okay, well I guess now they're splitting it with a lot of people. Yeah, and then whatever's left over, I guess they had a check to Greta Thunberg or something. Probably and like, yeah. To, please know, fix this. Part. <laughs> <laughs> please fix this when you're done playing chess. Uh, please fix the ozone. Um, yeah, we've we've definitely. Uh, I'm all for the climate, even though I feel like it's very late. Mm -hmm. uh, but people are definitely monetizing it. 
for sure. They're like, oh, are you going to reuse this grocery bag? That's $10. And okay, you're like, you, you know I'm going to forget every time. <laughs> you know I'm going to forget every time, and I'm not going to juggle these yogurts all the way home. <laughs> so, you're, you're literally speaking about my, last, my week last week. <laughs> yeah, dude, that's been, other than customer service, it's just been uh, dealing with people trying to buy things, trying to get places, and people just, like, out to lunch. And you're like, I get why everyone's buying this online. Yeah, I get why people are buying it online. I'm just afraid that I'm not going to be home and I'm going to miss it at my doorstep and someone's going to walk off with something really expensive. Yeah. So I'm going into this Best Buy so some kid with chap lips can tell me about a camera. <laughs> and I'm like, I don't... And then he yelled out how much it was. I, and I'm like, don't tell every now everybody like how much money I got. Yeah, well, yeah. not just that, but like we were at this Best Buy to completely pivot. We were at this Best Buy. We've been eyeballing a second camera because we're trying to. I like Netflix ain't calling, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know how to tell you this. I know everyone leaves the comment going, "When is Netflix coming for you?" I don't think they're coming for me. So I got to set up my production value to another level and just film my own stuff. Mm -hmm. And so I bought a second camera. Uh, it's a very nice camera to go along with the one I've had for years. And we went to a Best Buy in Denver while we were out there. And the kid looked it up. And then we wanted to add this lens to it. And you know how they have the display of lens lenses? There's all these lenses, and then there was one missing. And I was like, that was the one we wanted. And I was like, oh, what happened to that one? He's like, ah, someone walked in and ripped it off and walked out. Oh, damn. And I was like, okay. And then so we're like, all right, I guess we'll take the camera and just keep the stock lens on it for now. And then he goes to check us out, and he goes, he out loud. You don't have to say it out loud, dude. I see the number. Yeah, and he goes, it's twenty nine thousand <laughs> something or twenty nine hundred. I said th- he probably yelled thousand. It was like it was just under three grand. It was a very expensive camera. It's an investment into me, and I was like, I was sweating bullets. And then I'm, now you're gonna yell it. <laughs> There's some guy over there that's trying to rip off a GoPro, and now he's like, oh, I can just kick that guy's ass in the parking lot? And I'm like, shut up, dude. Like, just be discreet about it. And then they didn't even give me a bag. I just had to football carry a Sony A7, I don't know, my wife knows cameras. I just, she's like, that's a good one. And I was like, okay. Sony A7's good. Yeah, and it was a really nice camera, and I just had to football carry it out to the car. And just, this is the most valuable thing I own is what I'm holding right now. I don't own a car. I left that in San Diego. I'm getting into a rental car, and I'm just carrying this thing, and I'm like, dude, shut up. Don't tell everybody. Hey, there's a victim over here. <laughs> Follow this victim. Because you know how there's that security guy that checks off your receipt Hell as you yeah. leave? I feel like they should have an escort. Where, like, if your receipt's high, they'll be like, hey, this security guard's going to walk you back to your car. That's not a bad idea. I think, I think we're not far from that happening. Yeah. From how much, like how much thievery has gone up. Um, but yeah, and that also led to the other thing is I was super late going back to the idea of how uh, most customer service issues are my fault. I'm very disorganized. We were going to Denver and I didn't have my rental car set up. And I went on my national app and national's like, we're out of cars, dude. So I had to rent through Sixth and I got a good deal. Like it wasn't expensive. And... I didn't know that Sixth is all luxury cars now. I don't even know Sixth. Uh, they're orange, and it's misspelled Six, and they added a T at the end. And uh, I rented from them years ago, and they were horrible. And I was bummed that I had to rent from them again. But then I showed up, and their entire lot was like high-end. It was BMWs and Audis and stuff. And I was like, oh. And I didn't get the high-end car. I just got like a regular car. And they're like, yeah, you're in the BMW, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, whoa. So I'm all pumped until I'm actually driving the BMW. It, I've never, I've always owned Honda Fits, Honda Civics. Like that's my grade of car. And I always liked the car because I felt like I could go into any neighborhood. Like if you go into a rough neighborhood, no one assumes you have any money. And if you go into a rich neighborhood, they just think you're the cleaning lady. Right. So like you're kind of, you're kind of out, you just blend in because you have a regular car. We're in this white BMW taking an expensive camera into this BM... Like, we're just such a target Mm -hmm. for, like, please come. And we noticed that we would drive through some not-so-great neighborhoods of Denver, and you just see eyeballs. And my wife's like, do you notice this? And I go, yeah, I notice this. And I'm like, this is why... Like, we used to drive through not the best neighborhoods in San Diego in my Honda Fit. Nobody looked twice. (laughs) Nobody looked twice. Like, ah, it's just a neighbor driving through. And I'm like, I will... If I'm ever lucky enough 
to be like a millionaire or like some super rich guy. I'm going to have, I'm going to Bill Gates to get like a Honda Accord, you know, not even with the rims, just the stock, <laughs> stock wheels. And I think Honda Accords as nice as I can go and still feel comfortable without like acting like, uh, like I'm Richie Rich or something. But it's important. It's important for people not to know that you have something expensive on you and, uh, and all that. Like, I, one time I had to take a Greyhound bus from Portland to Medford, Oregon, and the first stop south on the Greyhound was Willamette, and it was in front of the state prison, and two prisoners got on, and they came on with their clear plastic bags, and they were proud of it, dude. They're like, we just got out of prison, and I was just sitting, and they sat in front of me, and I'm like, they, I was just like, had this fear. They looked at me, and I'm like, they know I have an iPad. Like, they, I could tell by the way they looked at me. They're like, they, de he definitely has an iPad. So I'm just like hugging my backpack going, I hope they can't, they can't feel the electronics with their eyes. <laughs> I'm like, this, this dude's got an iPad. We gotta, we gotta yoink it. Oh, yeah. Mm. But anyway, it was, uh, Denver was awesome. Everyone was great. I, uh, Oh, I, I forgot about this last week. Right before I flew to Denver, I had my first kind of real New York comedy moment where I had to follow a major star. Yeah, <laughs> have you have you had that moment yet? Not major, major, but someone who was major to me. So I, it was. Tough. It's still important. Who yeah. was yours? Um, well, once I followed Tony Rock. Yeah, that's on, pretty major. Yeah, for, that's, people might not know, but like Chris Rock's brother, but like, and he's a killer. Murders, dude. Yeah, literally murders. Yeah, and I was yeah, I was shitting myself. I would too. I think that might have even been a harder follow than what I had. I had Jim Gaffigan. Oh, psh, what are you? That's he's for getting standing O's. Yeah, he did. The, the, I think the most terrifying ever would be Dave Attell. Oh if, God! If he followed Attell for some reason, even though he usually goes on last. Yeah, but even though, yeah, I feel I like just he dreamed that would like if the, for some reason that came up, but. Yeah, that or Chappelle or somebody. Just someone yeah, legendary where you're like... A poppin', yeah, Chappelle. Yeah, this feels like you just showed up late to the sex party. <laughs> you know, you just like... Sh That's how I described it. So I was at Gotham, and I was I rushed over there, and I was supposed to go on next. And then uh, I see Jim Gaffigan walk in, and I was like, oh, my God, it's Jim Gaffigan. I was like, you know, starstruck, one of my heroes. And then... Uh, the manager comes by and goes, oh, Jim's going to pop in, then you'll go after him. I'm like, no, <laughs> God, no. And then I remember when he got introduced, the host was like, hey, this is why you always come to Gotham Comedy Club, because you never know who's going to show up. And he like kind of points to the side, yeah. and there was a guy right by where he was standing. I watched him. He turned. He saw Jim Gaffey, and went, no way. Like He put his hands on his head and went, no, like Jesus just showed up. <laughs> and they're like, oh, it's him. And then they say, then sh then the host said, Jim Gaffney, and the place threw babies in the air. They're like, ah! <laughs> they went ape. That's and he had a killer set. Of course, it's Jim Gaffigan. And then he ends, and it's a giant, almost a bigger eruption than when he started. And then it's just me, and you just have this moment with, I guess that fear never goes away, because I'm not new to comedy. I, would, I guess it's my 17th year mm -hmm. coming up. I'm... Uh, been doing a way i should have be a lot more successful for how long i've been doing it that's why i never say out loud yeah yeah I'm like you should keep that to yourself right. uh but i've been doing it for a long time but you still have that fear of like i think i know what to do and i know i should just go to my jokes but i have to acknowledge it i can't just go up there with nothing and so i just i kind of said that i'm like i feel like i showed up to a surprise party late <laughs> and you guys already blew the surprise, and then I showed up afterwards, like, hey, hey. and you guys are like, oh, yeah, there's some cake left. <laughs> like, like, there's, you missed you missed it, but there's some cake left. And uh, But it was just, I wonder if once you get to that level of fame, when you go to a club to work things out, if you feel like you're getting an honest response from the crowd, mm. because you're so famous, the people are just pumped to see you there. Yeah, like it, it must go through comics at that level's heads. All right, the first five minutes is them just happy to see me, and then maybe the f ten minutes I do after that, they're actually giving me an honest response on this material, you know? Because like guys like you and me, like you know, they're giving us an honest response from 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 jump. <laughs> like as soon as <laughs> as soon as we show up, they're like, yeah, we'll see what you got, you yeah. know? Yeah, so. Yeah, that's always been the I guess the big question when you get too famous, but 
everyone says you got the five, you got five minutes for them to love you, and then from there you got to you know you got to be funny. But I'm like, I think if you, it depends how bit like Chappelle and Gaffigan and Seinfeld and you know I don't know I I find it hard to believe they're like not getting any laughs for you know however long they're gonna do right bombing like I don't think she, I I think she, I, I imagine Chappelle can just kind of just stand there and people would would be in awe at least if not laughing but like you know not like. This guy sucks, you know? I think he does. Yeah. I, one, I, 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 no, he doesn't suck. That's not what I'm saying. I think he's legendary. But I no. think I one time, back in, oh, but this is before the big comeback. I was living in L.A., 07, 08, and we were out doing a show, and my buddy got a text saying, Chappelle's at the Improv. So we, like, hauled ass over there. And we're in the back corner. And it was the quietest and loudest I've ever heard an audience. Like, when he hit a punchline, the place right. erupted, throwing babies in the air, they lost their minds. But when he was, like, in between talking, setting up the next thing, you could have heard a pin drop in that room. Like, people wanted to hear every syllable right. that was coming out of his mouth. It was, it was almost like a religious exper uh, experience yeah. in the sense of, like, people were hanging on every word deeply. Yeah. And that was the most powerful, I think, set that I've ever seen. Like, I've never seen a crowd that into something. Right. And, uh, but also he was just kind of standing there. Yeah. Like, you know, Chappelle's kind of nonchalant style. Like I remember we had just had an earthquake that week and he kind of just flippantly talked about the earthquake. Right. And he, he said something mildly funny about it, but the place erupted like, like, cause it's Chappelle saying it. it's a legend saying this. Right. So it means a lot. Yeah. So the same, I mean. Yeah, I saw like Louie pop into the cellar once, like maybe two years ago. The entire, he's got his glasses on, fully reading out of his notebook, and just standing. Oh, people are just dying. <laughs> he literally dying and stand like five minutes standing ovation at the end. And you like you knew he, he was right before the last. I guess it was sincere. Sorry, I think was his last one, maybe. So whichever this most recent special is. Okay, okay. So he, he was had definitely done the prepping first, for that. He, he did had... the first comeback. Yeah, because I guess it's like two years ago. Yeah. Maybe when I moved to New York, maybe yeah, and. He gets on stage, puts his glasses on, opens a notebook immediately, and just starts reading out of it. Wow. But it was, I mean, he ha obviously had some stuff. It wasn't like all half-baked right. stuff, but like, yeah. dying, dude. Yeah. Dying. People are just dying. I wonder if it feels He's too so easy at too. that point. That's the thing. I guess he had to be in their heads, and you know, they're the only ones who can know for sure. Right. Like, is this too easy now? Right. It's, almost, it's almost like when a superstar athlete starts drinking. Because it's like, it's too easy. Like, do I have to work that hard to right. be this great? Or can I just be this great? Can I show up drunk and still be the best basketball player or whatever in the world? I don't know. I it's, It might be a problem you and I never have. <laughs> I'll definitely never have it. You, you'll I don't have think it I will either. I, I kind of hope I don't. Like, I think about... Uh, um, yeah, every once in a while, some like a nice fan will be like, oh, you're going to be huge one day. And I'm like, I'll, I'll be super happy if I'm not. Yeah. Like, even if I was at this level till I died, I'd be so super pumped. Like, just give oh, me yeah. like a give me like a couple hundred people that will come see me in every town. And that's great. Like Stanhope talked about it where he said, I'm famous within 100 feet of the place I'm performing. at." Yeah. I heard him say that. Yeah. And then outside of that, nobody knows me. And he's like, I prefer it that way because he's friends with Johnny Depp, who's like maybe the most famous person on the world in the world. And he can't walk down the street without someone like yelling pirate jargon at him or what you know whatever the hell it is that's hilarious yeah so i'd 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 rather not but it's funny saying oh i'd rather not have that like like that's even an option on the table right you know you're like oh no 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 i won't have the million dollars it's like no one's offering you a million dollars <laughs> you're not turning down things that aren't on the table you're just trying to pretend that you not having it is your decision um what did i write down Oh yeah, watched. Did you watch Monday Night Football last night? No. This is two weeks later, so it won't matter. But uh, I watched the game, and one of my favorite—I don't know if this could be a joke idea—but one of my favorite things is that sports announcers like love uh, saying the last time something happened. You know, they're like the Browns. They're like the last time the Browns started a season two and zero was nineteen ninety three, and they just kept repeating that stat over and over again. And I was like, that'd be funny if they did that. Uh, for people, 
you know like like jim hasn't been on a second date since before the pandemic <laughs> like, like, like something yeah. something lame like that see if that was read out of a notebook at the comedy cellar standing <laughs> yeah, ovation, yeah, exactly. standing ovation. <laughs> yeah, it's like, uh, I, the last time dave went without showering for four days it was after 9 11 <laughs> like but now he's depressed again he's coming back around i don't know i had that moment i think i was thinking about that because i was in my own head trying to enjoy uh, a protein bar that my wife had made me organically. My wife is on a very new but serious health kick. And so uh, she just, which it's fine. I'm all supportive. I love to eat healthy too. I'd like to eat more healthy. But she goes, she went so far the other way where yesterday I'm watching the game and she brought a mug of turmeric water. She just put turmeric in like hot water and brought it over, and I'm like, but it's just broth. I don't right. know if you've had turmeric. I actually take turmeric the pill. I take the organic pills just because I they're good with skin and inflammation, and I got bad skin and stuff. You but have bad skin. You I look did so for smooth. A, well, I did for a long time. I actually started taking turmeric and like a couple other things, and and it kind of cleared it up. Yeah. Okay. Well, she didn't mention the skin thing to me, but I every, take the pills though. I don't. I wouldn't. I you wouldn't, wouldn't like, drink it. Probably yeah. not. Yeah, the, I wouldn't want to. <laughs> I, don't, I didn't want to, yeah. and but she she was like, no, drink this, and I took a sip, and she's like, it's not bad, right? I'm like, and it wasn't, right? But it was like drinking bland chicken soup broth, yeah. And I was like, I'm good, you know. And pills a good idea, but I didn't. Uh, the thing she kept bringing up with every health food thing was inflammation. Yeah, apparently everything just makes us inflamed. So we're all just puffy out there. Just, apparently, yeah. yeah apparently, <laughs> <laughs> you know, we need to be de-inflamed. But she. I didn't. I had no issue with the health kick, but she went after my protein bars. She like, you know, I looked at the uh, packaging on your protein bars, and it's got seed oil. And I'm like, okay, that sounds pretty healthy. <laughs> yeah, isn't that good? Yeah. Oil from seeds. We're supposed to eat <laughs> seeds. And she's like, no, no, no. I looked up seed oil. That causes cancer, and a lot of that gets broken down, and it's micro infectious to your cells. And I'm like, what? this protein bar and she's like oh and there's 12 grams of sugar added and i'm like yeah that's for the flavor <laughs> that's how you get it flavorful yeah. you m people don't remember but protein bars i think came out i get at least for me because i'm a kid in the 90s power bar yeah. made a protein and it's garbage it was a piece of tar it was that you would open it up and it was black tar and you just take a bite out of it, and they said it was chocolate, and you're like, you fooled me. I think I, I remember that. Yeah, you remember that? It was so kind of slimy, and it just, it it looked like asphalt that hadn't hardened yet. Right. And you're like, oh, it's just gooey enough, but it's not. And it was a chore to eat, and you just choked it down. And the only people that ate it were like runners, you know, someone who's running 20 miles, and they like, they got to eat something while they're running at mile 15. And so that was like where Protein Bar started. And then now we're at a place where there's a million kinds of protein bars, and supposedly they're all bad for you. Like I, I this one bodybuilder guy told me about this one bar that has like no sugar in it, and it's like or it's like one gram of sugar, no carbs, and it tastes like ass. <laughs> it that of course it does. Like they had a flavor. I got a flavor. It said birthday cake, and I'm like, this is the birthday cake of a parentless child <laughs> like this is a this is a birthday cake you'd get in a, a state funded orphanage like this is not a birthday cake dude this is this is a you're never getting adopted here's your cake and a wrapper treat like it was it was brutal and then so my wife she's like you know what you'll finish up those bars but no more bars after that and I was like, oh, that's when you find out you're both on this diet. <laughs> like, at first, you're like, oh, you're on a health kick. Oh, we're both on a health kick. Right. And uh, she's like, I can make this. I think I can make this bar without seed oil and whatever else is going to cause inflammation. And so she made these uh, granola bars with uh, rolled oats and a couple bits of dark chocolate. And it was good, but it was missing about... 12 grams of sugar. <laughs> I think it was missing about 12 grams of sugar Old and a flavor. couple drops of of uh, seed oil uh, away from being amazing. <laughs> and then she's like, how is it? I'm like, it's it's all right. It's missing 12 grams of sugar. She goes, and then she gets offended because she went out of her way to make this for me. So I was, I was kind of being a dick, but the Steelers were losing and I was in a, uh, I was in a, I was in a situation, but I don't know, man. Like I, I hope, I, I think she's going to dial in the protein bars I don't know if she's going to start making a factory of them so that I can take them on my trips 
where I open them in little Ziploc bags on the plane and <laughs> drill them into my face. But we might get to that point. But it's it's I've been doing this joke on stage and it's been working. Like we're on the uh, we're on the portion control diet, and that's where you eat kind of whatever you want, but a, a lot less of it. Yeah. And then if you've never been on that diet, what you do after you finish that small meal is for the next 30 minutes, you say out loud how that was the perfect amount of food. <laughs> and you just go, that was the perfect amount of food. Any more than that, I wouldn't be able to do jumping jacks right now. <laughs> and but that's what you say on the outside. On the inside, you're like, that was just enough to piss me off. <laughs> that was just enough food to get my salivary glands cooking before. And then it ended. It just ended. And that's why it's important to do a diet together with your significant other. Because eventually one of you is going to crack. One of you is going to go, ah, I'm getting a Hershey bar and I'm going to jam it up my ass. <laughs> and that's, that's when the other person goes, no, 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 sweetie, uh, split it with me. And then, and, then, and then no one gets the Hershey bar in the butt. Everyone just eats it traditional, but half. And that's kind of all couples diets. You kind of go into them together. One person takes it more serious than the other. Where, like, I was on the side of, like, oh, more salads? And she was on the side of, like, no more dressing. And you're like, whoa. The and then of. it just went so hard the other way that we're trying to figure out how seriously we're both taking it. And uh, try to get down to that. Which, I don't know. I want to get down to, I guess I have to get down to 165. I weigh 170. Zoltan, <sighs> stop talking. You're pissing me off. I do. I weigh 175. And you're I, a stick figure. I, that's what I thought. Dude, I'm trying to get into the hundreds right now. <laughs> <laughs> into the Oh, you're in two? You look good for two. I know, but I, I, I you know, I got to get down. I'm, my, I'm trying to get to 180. 180s. And the then, goal? I, then I, no, the goal is even lower than that. But I want to start with 180. Yeah, that was my. So when I was heavy, I was up 210, 215. That's what I'm at 210. Yeah, 208, 210. And and uh, it it took a long time. Well, it took a summer. I went through a breakup, and the depression helped. Uh, try to get depressed. <laughs> oh, I'm there. <laughs> okay, but I. I Breakup, like maybe, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, more depressed. <laughs> Tell your significant other to break your heart just for a couple just weeks. For a few yeah, weeks. and then come back. But, That's a good idea. Um, but yeah, I, my goal weight was 185, and then I got down to one, and I've been floating at 175 for the last few years. But I, you ever do the, you ever make the mistake of typing in your height and weight? And to see what you're supposed to weigh. Oh, that, well, that's the thing. Everyone's like, you don't look that. I'm like, yeah, but I am. And if for my height, I'm like 30 pounds overweight. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That, I'm not tall. <laughs> isn't that, Yeah, I'm not tall. Well, yeah. you and I are about the same height. Maybe I'm yeah. a little taller than you or you're, I forget. But uh, but yeah, I typed in my thing. And then they're like 5'9", 175. I am pre-obesity is the term for it. <laughs> so, so if I put 5'8 and a half, 210, they're going to be like, you're obese. <laughs> yeah, they're going to call yeah, you. Yeah, because I put in my old height and weight. Yeah. And they were like, oh, yeah, you're obesity level one. Yeah. And I guess they just have it in levels, like obesity level one, two, three, four, um, until however it goes. And you're like, do you have to call it that? Right. Can we go back to like the 90s when I used to go clothes shopping and it was just husky? Oh, yeah. Remember how nice Husky was? Sure. You're, you're like, oh, yeah, I am kind of Husky. Yeah. You know, it makes me feel good in my Bugle Boy shirt. <laughs> Call me. Give me the Husky medium. Uh, obese sounds like, that's like a scientist calling you fat. Yeah. And you're like, I could go without that. You're really hurting my feelings, <laughs> you know? But maybe, maybe if, we, if I cut out these uh, seed oils and these uh, 12 grams of sugar in these protein bars I love to eat when I'm high, mm -hmm. uh, I can get into the 160s and the internet can stop calling me fat. Because <laughs> that's where it started. I got I got a bunch of comments on YouTube. They're like, look at this tub of ass. And I was like... <laughs> oh, back when you were a two whatever? Oh, yeah, really? dude. I used yeah. to have a bit about it. Because what I would do is I'd be in a hotel room. Like, it, it's weird to get called fat by just, like, a person you know. That hurts. But to get called fat by a complete stranger, yeah. where you're just like in bed in a hotel, and then you're reading YouTube comments, and you're like, look at this, he looks like my fat uncle, Uncle McFat Fat. <laughs> and then you just go to sleep after that. You just go, well. Right. <laughs> you know? And I'm like, that's like, imagine getting ready for bed, and someone runs by your bedroom window and goes, good night, you fat ass. <laughs> and you're like, Whoa. well, now I'm not going to sleep. Thanks, right. dude. And uh, so those comments definitely got to me. I think Tom Segura said a similar thing where he was like fat shamed by people like his audience and just youtube comments and then it got him to lose weight he lost a lot of weight yeah he lost a ton of weight and then broke his arm but yeah. uh but he lost a ton of weight so like the bullying helped but i i still don't think that's the way because then there's a lot of other people who are like 
if you say that to you, they'll just eat more. Right. And no matter what you do, you're going to give them an unhealthy relationship with food. Yeah. You know, did you grow up with that? Like an unhealthy? Mm, not really. No, I oh. was always like, I just, I, I've always eaten whatever I wanted. Yeah. And like, I mean, you know, I'm obviously like a little bit like thicker, but like my metabolism was always decent. But then it, College, you know, end of college, like early 20s when your metabolism starts to go, that's when I started to become a little bit like bigger. Yeah. And yeah, my thing is just, my thing is now the, the portion control and the fasting. I'm still, but like eating healthy every single time you eat has never been easy for me. Yeah. Or my friends will be like, eat like, they'll they'll pick the healthy option or they'll just eat like the portion that like a bird would eat. And I'm like, <laughs> I wish I could do that. Like I'm starving. Like even, like I can't do that. It's so hard. I'm hungry all the time. Me too. And I grew up in a uh, eat because you're lonely and eat because you're sad. Right. That's how I was like, because my mom was a single mom. So like, I remember we'd start, I'd start a new school. I remember I started this new school and I hated it for like the first week. So she took me to Carl's Jr. twice that week. Ooh. Yeah. Because I was just sad. Yeah. And she's like, well, why don't you get a double Western cheeseburger? That's the one with the onion rings on it. That's and I had that. awesome mom. It's, she's great. <laughs> but then I just, I, I like... I put in food with loneliness, and she didn't make this. By the way, mom, if you're watching this, which I know you're not, I love you. You didn't make a mistake. You're trying your best. Uh, but like that mixed with I was alone all the time because my mom was at work, so and she wouldn't let me go outside until she came home because she didn't want yeah. someone breaking into the house. So I was just alone watching TV all day, especially during summer breaks, and just pounding cereal. Right, and then slowly just started to get big. So I I account for food as you're lonely, might as well eat something. And also a time waster. Yeah. You know, like I procrastinate. Yeah. Where you're like about to do something you don't want to do. Like, oh, I got to go on the DMV website. <laughs> Better eat a sugar bar. <laughs> you know, like, get, let me get myself a little treat Definitely. before I got to find my driver's license and figure <laughs> out this dumb government website. But yeah, I've always had this like weird thing with food, but I also don't want to be the other way. Where you know those people like you see them on an airplane, they wear sandals with socks, Ugh. and then they just pull out all these like snacks they put together themselves in little ziplocs, and you're like, you can tell it's like nuts and granola, yeah. but none of them have salt or any sugar on them, oh, and they just have that pale skin, and you know what I'm talking yes, about. Yeah, I, I wish I could be that, but with actual, I wish I could look like them, not the skin, but like the the the, the thinness. Yeah, the body but type. But eat whatever I want. Like, yeah. I just like, people who like, don't have the sh sugar tooth, like, um, sweet tooth cravings, or like, pizza, like, you know, can eat, can only eat like one slice of pizza and then be good. Like, I just I can't do that. And yeah. I grew up with Italian father, like Italian pasta and all that stuff. And, you know, my mom was like, she didn't, we didn't, she didn't like cook unhealthy, but like she cooked like every night though. She like cooked yeah. a meal. And I'm just like, I you can't You grew up that. in a proper Italian household. Yeah. Which... yeah. And my mom was not even Italian, but she oh. knew how to cook. Miraculously, right. she's Irish and she actually knows how to cook. Oh, Which okay. is, a, you know, usually they don't. Um, <laughs> we all learn something. they don't have any night. food. <laughs> you <laughs> Irish potatoes, mothers. Yeah, you boil and corn potatoes. Beef. Um, corn, be corn beef, which isn't bad, but also you're like, uh, yeah, that, there's a reason people have it once a year. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's a once a year food. It's kind of like the fair. Uh, you go once a year, and then you're like, "That's good." Do you do the? You're like, you're like, but you've been able to keep it around 175, which is good. It's yeah. good to get get somewhere, and then keeping it around there is the yeah. harder part. So if you could do that, I the only way I've been able to keep it there, I've been there since 2017, 2018, I think 175. And the only reason I keep it there is I weigh myself every day. Yeah, which drives my wife crazy. She's like, "You're too obsessed with the number." And I'm yeah. like, I have to be, because if I don't, it will get out of hand. That's good. And then I'll, and then I know if I balloon up to 215 again, I can't do it. I can't lose the weight unless, unless my wife leaves me. Like, I can't, like, and I told her that. I go, the only, if I get fat again, the only way I can get unfat is you have to break my heart and leave. <laughs> and then, and then I can lose the weight again. Then I guess come back. I don't know what right. you're supposed to do or just, you know devastate me forever <laughs> yeah because i'm one of those i don't have the i don't have it man i need depression in my heart to not to control the portions and not eat yeah that's kind of like me i just i can do i mean my thing is just um yeah my thing is consistency like i 
I went on a f- the hard intermittent fasting, and I yeah. literally lost five pounds in like two weeks. That's great. But then I just get like I'm just like, and then I but like it, it takes me like a day or two to just go off the rails again. And I, like last week, I was not doing well. Now I'm like trying to be back on it because you see how quickly you c- it can happen, but you have to be consistent. Otherwise, yep. it's, you got to keep it going for like you know until however long it, t- it takes to get used to it, a few months or whatever. Right. Because it is so difficult i think you kind of have to look at it like people do with like we were talking about drug and heroin addiction like uh anthony kiedis and all those people you have to almost have uh alcoholic drug addict mindset in recovery of i of saying i'm not going to not do drugs for the rest of my life i'm just not going to do it today right and then you you just keep saying today until you're 100 and then it kind of sticks because otherwise because i fall into the same trap i'll lose like five pounds or three pounds or whatever be like 172 and i'm like Woo! <laughs> let's go get we're yeah, going out baby exactly, we're going exactly. out give me some booze <laughs> uh, more bread and then before you oh 177 whoa yeah. all right we we went hard the other way so it's it's really hard to to keep consistent and everyone struggles with it and the world's ending yeah yeah, the world, for sure. I mean, we are in a three-way race between World War Three, <laughs> the climate, and uh, AI. AI. Of what's going to ki- take it? Yeah. Who's going to win? Who knows? It's a three-way race for the end of the world, <laughs> and we're over here going Highway One Seventy Five. I got to get it down to One Sixty Eight so the <laughs> internet doesn't call me pre obese. I've noticed, uh, I think society is getting ready for the world's end because I've gotten less retirement ads. Okay. I've, I used, I remember five years before the pandemic, I was like inundated with, are you ready for retirement? Like advertisements all over everything I would click on would be like, people would, even my mom would be like, get a retirement plan, blah, blah, blah. And since then, I don't think I've seen a retirement commercial personally. I haven't gotten yeah. any. Now I'm getting commercials like, "Hey, do you want to learn guitar?" And you're like, <laughs> you're like trying to knock off bucket list things before the before all the ice caps melt. Yeah, I don't think that. I think the retirement plans are. I had the retirement plan for like two years. And now I realize it's either we're going to be taken over by the time, or I'm something. It's going to be so expensive. I'm going to be working till I'm nine hundred until I'm ninety. So I yeah, mean, I don't think I don't think I'm retiring. Even if you save up a million dollars. By the time you we're, go through that, yeah, you go through that in like a couple months. It's gonna be worthless, but <laughs> yeah. because like I, I, I don't know, man. I think about what, like the amount of money I make now a year. I thought th- that would make me the richest man alive ten years ago. Because, it, but it's also like I grew up poor, so it's also from a antiquated standpoint of trailer park, right. where I was raised on twenty seven to thirty thousand dollars a year, probably less. When I was a kid, because money was worth more then. Yeah. So, like, to me, fifty thousand dollars a year was like, oh my god, you're rich. Oh yeah. A hundred thousand dollars a year, you're like, a you're like right before a millionaire. Right. Like in my mindset, but now you, you kind of get there a little bit, and then you're like, oh, this is just enough to keep your head out of the water. Mm-hmm. Like everyone else is here. Everyone else, like everyone else, making fifty grand is like here, just like, mm-hmm. like it's just the water tickles up some months, and you're like, oh, blah, blah, blah. and then you come out, and you're like, oh, we can go to the movies, we can go to the movies, just, oh, no, 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 I cancel Netflix, like it just it just comes me every month, yeah, <laughs> dude, <laughs> literally, so many people. I used to live like that, and and then, but then you make a little more money, but then they keep moving the goalposts. Oh, dude, the inflation's insane. The inflation and and all that stuff, and then just the cost of rent. I mean, rent is included with inflation. Inflation is the overarching term for all of it, definitely. And so you only get to here. Yeah. And the water's at your neck. You're like, well, at least I can breathe with my nose and my mouth. Right. That's cool. But then you're like, how much longer until it trickles back up again, or do you get more out of the water? And we live here. And yeah. Dude. If if here, like 50 grand is like, you're not even going to be able to like do. You can't do. You know. You can't. I think even, there's like, people on the streets making fifty grand. A year. <laughs> I, 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 I honestly think. I, I think Dude, there's someone I living in a van is, going. Yeah, I make fifty grand a year, yeah. and and I'm able I, to keep this van. Yeah, exactly. And you're like, I can, man. I can eat more, but I got to live in a van. It's it's wild, and yeah. some people. It's it's amazing to me because the world is splitting. Mm-hmm. Like there's more and more billionaires, and there's more and more homeless people, and then there's the rest of us kind of in the middle, noticing these two trends yeah and it's amazing to me how many people are like yeah i got better odds of being that guy really 
You have the better odds of being Elon Musk than that guy <laughs> that's next to your house. Yeah. That guy next to your house is just, you're two missed paychecks from being right next to him <laughs> going, man, I really thought I was going to be Elon Musk. Like, you don't even know an Elon Musk. You don't know anybody in that gated neighborhood. The guy that's living on the street is right outside your front door. The odds of you being that guy, yeah. way closer than the other guy with the social media company. And it's uh, it's just wild how people look at it. And I'm not against capitalism i always feel like every time i talk about this i'm anti i sell my own tickets to my show all right i am the most capitalistic person i think there might be oh, yeah. but this idea that we got a shot to be that instead of ending up to be that is you're just not looking at it clearly you gotta clean those glasses and take another gander i think it's almost over <laughs> i just we just need to hope that the world ends, whether it's a po whether it's AI, whether it's World War Three, or whether it's climate change, before we all end up on the street. For real. And that's why I'm. I think I'm gonna buy a guitar. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna take the guitar <laughs> lessons. I'm gonna get the nylon string. I've been looking it up. It's a nylon string Spanish guitar, and it just has yeah. a nice tone to it. I don't even listen to a lot of Spanish music, but I like the <laughs> I like the tone. You look like a guitar player. I, I my whole family. Uh, musicians oh, on yeah. my father's side and my mother's side. I'm the only one that um, never got into it. I'm just got into talking, mm. but uh, but I would love to be a guitar player. I'm so jealous of musicians. Me too. So jealous, and th some of them are jealous of us because they which, get yeah, which, which, which they wouldn't be if they tried it. Exactly. Yeah. Because I'm I'm fairly certain if you had the option, if you could do both and stand in front of a crowd and go. And then hit the pedal and then make the faces yeah. and watch men and women go, ha, ah, 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 or go up there and go, oh, we got automatic cat feeders for the cats this week and have to go, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> you would take the guitar every time. Guitar You're like, I so want to melt dude. face. It's also the best response to any heckler. Yeah. Like if anyone yells, you suck, you just turn up that amp and go, Raw, what'd you say? <laughs> As opposed to having to have some snappy comeback to break this guy's will that you've never met. <laughs> For real. Mm. But yeah, I've always wanted to... I would rather be a musician, definitely. Let's see what else I had written down. I had so much... Well, maybe I haven't. Yep, talked about the seed oil. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, this is the other thing. Every town that I go to... What, thankfully, I know, I know people at the town which is just comes from years of traveling and years of friends moving to different cities. And I feel horrible because I don't want to hang out with anybody. <laughs> every every time we go to, the people are like, oh, lunch and barbecue? And I'm like, mm, <laughs> man, you don't understand how much I enjoy laying in a hotel room and Damn. doing nothing. Like, you don't get it. It's so wonderful to get up, get that free breakfast. My mm. goal at a hotel is to not leave it until I have to go do the show. That's my entire goal at a you hotel. You want to sightsee? Huh? You want to sightsee? Depends on the city. If, sure. If it's a city I haven't been to, yes. I, I want to. Uh, yeah, true. Yeah. But if it's a city I've been to a lot, yeah. less. Yeah, yeah. Uh, like Denver, I've been to a few times. We went hiking, which is cool. The other thing we were thinking about going to is this thing called Meow Wolf, which is like an art, uh, a modern art gallery that looks like you could go high and it would be a great time. Yeah. And we toyed with that idea, but we ended up just going hiking. But I'd, I'd like to do that as opposed to like, there's like people I'll have lunch with and I'll enjoy it. And then there's a lot of other people where I'm like, I'd really rather not. And it's no indictment on them. It's just, I really love that hotel time. Mm -hmm. Especially on Saturday, college football is on right now. And you're like, I could just set up, I could Uber Eats. Like, dude, I could go to lunch with you. But I just tipped the Uber Eats driver extra to feed me while I lay in bed. <laughs> and, I'm like, and it's like, I can't give this up. I got my head propped up. There's college football playing, which I don't even have a college football team I follow. I just like watching it. Right. And then just eating Jimmy John's or Jersey Mike's while I'm on the computer here, watching stuff over there, half reading. Just doing all the things that I could actually do at home, but for some reason makes more sense at a Spring Hill Inn and Suites. There's something about it. I don't, I'm, I'm the most antisocial person on the planet, and 
I guess narcissistic too, because the only time I want to spend time with people is when I get to be on stage and they have to listen to me. <laughs> I think that's, I hate the... That's most of us. That's most of us, man. I hate it. I, I said that, that's how I started the last or a couple podcasts ago, where I'm like, I hate it when it's not my turn to talk. <laughs> that's my least favorite time, sure. especially when someone's going on and on, like me right now. Like someone... Hopefully not you, but someone is listening to this going, I wish it was my turn to talk. And I'm like, it's still my turn to talk. <laughs> anyway, but I uh, I love all the gifts that people have given. Uh, Darlene out in Milwaukee gave me a Culver's gift card, so I got to take... You had Culver's? No, what is that? It's a ch- burger and custard place. I've heard of it, yeah. It's a chain place out of Wisconsin, and they make a butter... They're known for a butter burger. Okay. So I took Emma to that. That burger might have been the start of the healthy eating. <laughs> Actually, I think I think we had that burger, and Emma's like, "All right, we're going on a healthy eating kick because we can't. We just scarf down a double cheeseburger that had butter on it." <laughs> but we actually we love to rank cheeseburgers, Emma and I, and our our with without weight class, I think our our tier is Shake Shack number one, and then. Culver's might have jumped in at number two, and then it might be like in and out five guys. And then uh, for my fast food chain on the Burger King McDonald's level, uh, Wendy's. I think Wendy's has Ooh. the most underrated cheeseburger of all the of all the fast foods. You ever have Seventh Street? No, Seventh Street Burger. Is my, that a local my, New York chain? Yeah. Oh, okay, I've yeah, not had that. There's one on Seventh Street, obviously, but it's a little bit of a chain. There's a couple more, but the one on Seventh Street in East Village is like the original one. Okay, that could break your top ten, at least your ten. It's really good. okay. Yeah. All right, yeah, I gotta, I gotta go to that. Like, because there's always like the restaurant burgers too. Yeah. But if it's like a, because that's it's how Shake food. Shack started. Yeah, Shake Shack started from what I read in New York, yeah. and then uh, started as a stand, and then now it's all franchised yeah. everywhere. But I, my wife and I always used to argue because she, I would be like, yeah, I'm a California guy, so I love In-N-Out. Sure. And she's like, yeah, but Shake Shack's better. I'm like, yeah, but it costs twice as much, so you can't compare the two. Yeah, I was actually shocked how cheap In-N-Out is. In-N-Out is four dollars. Everyone says In-N-Out's overrated. I'm like, it's pretty good. It's I first of all, their fries are overrated. Yeah. Their burgers not overrated. It's also it's unfair to try food or to try anything with expectation. Right. Because now you're getting in your own judging. You're getting in the way of your own palate. And so, uh, but I think In-N-Out burgers are great, but they also cost $4. Yeah, it's unheard of. As opposed to like an $8 uh, Shake Shack burger. You can't compare. That one better tastes better. Right. Um, But yeah, those are my, also Whataburger I'll throw up there. I'm going to be in Texas in October, and I haven't had a Whataburger in a while, so I have to remind myself what it tastes like. But I remember always liking it every time I've had it. But uh, Culver's, delicious burger. You guys are crushing it out there. And you crushed it so hard that my wife gave me a hard time over the seed oil in my protein bars. That's how (laughs) delicious your butter burgers were. Anyway, I think, what are we at, 50 minutes? 57. 57. Good Lord, we got to wrap up. I think that's it. Uh, thank you for listening, downloading, sharing, subscribing, doing whatever you do to go to this, watch this podcast, listen to this podcast. Uh, leave a five star review if you're listening. Tell a friend and come see me live. ZoltanComedy.com. Buy some tickets and see you next week. Trekking heavier, traveling light. There's one thing that's right wherever I go. That's where I am.